Hey everyone, Alex Williams of the New Stack here for the Prisma Cloud Native Security Summit. Today we are talking about the state of cloud native security. I am joined for the discussion today with two people from Bank United, Felipe Medina and Michael Lembeck. And my first question for you, Michael, is really helping us understand what Bank United provides. What is it that Bank United does as a business? Absolutely. Uh, we are a mid-sized bank. Uh, we service both commercial and consumer uh, banking needs. We are headquartered in Miami, Miami Lakes, Florida, with offices in uh, throughout Florida and New York, uh, with an estimated $32 billion, uh, in total assets, which basically makes us one of the largest independent uh, deposit institutions in Florida. Today, we're going to be talking a lot about cloud services and cloud native technologies. And it's often the financial sector that serves as a barometer for how cloud services are used and at scale technologies are developed, deployed, and managed. And Bank United is really representative of this shift to cloud native technologies and the requirements that they viewed were really needed to make sure they had a safe, secure environment. You know, and so on that note, I wanted to ask you, Michael, can you tell us about the cloud services that you use? And when did you migrate to the cloud and how did you manage it? And what was the approach that you took? Yeah, so the bank actually began its cloud journey uh, about three years ago. And our initial use case, interestingly enough, was to look at it not necessarily from a production perspective, but uh, how can we kind of test the waters, and, but yet still get something, some tangible returns? So we really went from a DR use case. Uh, what we did is we built out our initial cloud estate in US East One, and uh, we basically proofed out our ability to be able to fail over between our primary data centers uh, to AWS uh, in a disaster recovery type scenario. So that basically enabled us to get an initial footprint stood up and proof out that our mission critical systems could in fact run uh, in that cloud uh, estate. There's a certain degree of mysticism when it comes to cloud native security. How did you overcome that, Felipe? How did you think about that approach and what were some of the use cases that you would highlight? So, you know, the, the initial response here is, you know, we, we took a very cautious approach to our cloud journey. Uh, one of the first things that we decided to go ahead and do is uh, surface a typical network scenario or a legacy network scenario. And we, we went ahead and uh, leveraged Palo Alto Networks uh, firewalls in our VPCs and in our transit to go ahead and sit down and inspect all of the traffic. The other piece to this answer is that we took a very cautious approach in the fact that what we did was we initially only used AWS and our cloud real estate to go ahead and do DR. And we ran our entire disaster recovery exercise last year from the cloud. Uh, and that was what was relegated to that. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Mike? That was a large success. And to Felipe's point, that was the springboard to then say, at this point, we have a level of confidence that we know those systems can run, that we can sustain this environment. So let's go ahead and now go ahead and flip the script and instead of the cloud being our disaster recovery, let's, let's look to go ahead and now use this for our full-time, all-the-time production. And uh, from a recovery recoverability perspective, either leverage multiple AZs and or additional regions uh, to fil facilitate DR and really just get out of the, the data center business altogether. All right, well, thank you for that answer. Now, I have another question about how your security posture has evolved in your approach to cloud services since those early days. Absolutely. I mean, I think at this point, what we've, what we've seen happen is we've seen a, an evolution in terms of leveraging some native features with, within AWS, within our CSP, as well as leveraging key third-party partners, such as Palo Alto Networks, to really try and, and uh, improve on our security posture uh, overall. 
uh, we had a, a high benchmark to, to work against in terms of comparison against our current on-premise estate. But one of the things that we really took out of the gate is we wanted to try and make improvements in that area so that way we could prove to ourselves as well as to our many, many audit bodies that not only did we make a migration to the cloud, but we made a migration to the cloud that was inclusive of a, an improvement of our security posture. Uh, and to be honest, that has only been possible through, again, uh, very tight-knit partnerships, not only with our CSP, but also uh, with uh, key third-party partners such as Palo Alto Networks, uh, as well as really making quite an investment within the team itself in terms of really uh, helping to drive education and familiarity with the platform. So that way we could understand the nuances that cloud presents that are different from what we have typically safeguarded against uh, from an on-premise perspective. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think, I think one of the first things to go ahead and note is that moving, moving in, I was not a Palo Alto fan. Okay, and that's, uh, that's something that I, I had done a couple of pen tests on. And I actually uh, had, uh, had bypassed your IPS signatures and whatnot. Uh, that was years ago during uh, a couple of pen tests and we had a Palo Alto ProServe resource. However, um, there has been a huge uh, change uh, and shift uh, on my mentality here. You know, the, the, the fact that um, these, these devices and your services have gone ahead and scaled for one, uh, for two, uh, the partnership. And that's, that's where I drive most of my decisions when I go ahead and look at products. I, am, I, I try to remain as agnostic as possible, but truly uh, one of the best partnerships that we have right now is with our Palo Alto account team. So uh, that, that was the change maker. And uh, it was the account reps and the uh, SEs that went ahead and actually uh, changed in my mind. Right and and got us to where we we are today. I want to just ask how they change your mind. Diligence, they've been on on point, uh, and I'll be honest, the company Palo Alto Networks has changed my mind because uh, we have every time we think of something that we want to go ahead and do to secure our cloud, it seems like you guys are one step ahead of us, and there's some sort of announcement the moment we think of it. Excellent. So how did your use of cloud native technologies evolve through this process? Honestly, what I think it really evolved as we started to get, I'm going to call it um, wins under our belt. Now, disaster recovery was yet, was yet the first, but as we started to onboard additional applications, uh, as we started to grow confidence in the platform uh, through those wins, I think that's what really drove that. And uh, as we worked on the education of our engineers and the organization in general, uh, that awareness and the power of the platform really started to spread out uh, to the point where you know, now we've got new applications that we're no longer just migrating. We have applications that are actually being developed and born in the cloud, i.e. like what we're doing right now with our current uh, new online and mobile banking platform. Uh, that is a first of its kind for the bank and it's based entirely on cloud native uh, design patterns from containerization to RDS, et cetera. That's awesome. So what's on your roadmap for further adopting and evolving your approach to cloud services and cloud native techno technologies that bake in security? Well, I think to Felipe's point, it's really looking to further adopt more cloud native designs. Now we're really looking to really operationalize and really uh, further our maturity around the containerized state. Uh, because if you look at it, that's truly a, a, front, a different frontier in and of itself. It's unlike anything that we have done from an IT perspective, especially from an operations uh, frontier. You know, if you look at how you've done traditional networking and how you would do that within the containerized space, very different in that regards. There's brings a, a various nuances that are new to the table. And I think that's been one of the challenges for a lot of the security toolings that we have looked at in the past is the fact that, you know, again, there's various different nuances that are now presented in these more cloud native uh, functions, whether they be things through Lambda and serverless, uh, again, things for, for containers that 
are, are very still new, for lack of better words. Uh, maybe there's not a lot of production workloads in those. Uh, and I, I think that's where we've seen this particular platform shine for us is the fact that we are able to get line of sight. We are able to not have our level of security and oversight of these uh, cloud native design patterns. Uh, we haven't had to have that suffer, even though we've moved into something that uh, is much more different than what we have done previously. You know, when we all started this, uh, especially within uh, adopting containers, it was just like, oh my goodness, you know, clusters, nodes, pods, oh my, you know, it was just trying to get your head around all the nuances there. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's these types of solutions, Twistlock being one of them, that has really helped us uh, in terms of being able to get a better comfort level uh, to be able to really start to develop more of a confidence. So what I would say in terms of next steps, it's really continuing along the lines of, of you know, adopting those more uh, cloud native design patterns. Uh, I would say uh, expanding our footprint into additional regions within AWS and, and uh, honestly, even from a multi-cloud perspective. And I think that's the, the unsung story with this platform is, you know, doing security and compliance within a single CSP is one thing, but, you know, let's say you're using Amazon and uh, an Azure, do you really want to reinvent the wheel and make everything native to that CSP and have to understand how you manage you know that security and governance across those two csps that can become very arduous uh, and almost double work for lack of better, better words here you have a platform that will go ahead and allow you to have a single interface something that the engineers are already familiar with so that way it's not a matter of having to re relearn everything just because i happen to have a, a workload in aws versus a workload in azure uh, it allows for the team to be able to solve for that and not have to kind of extract, abstract away a little bit the, the CSP? I mean, the, the, the fact is that, you know, as, as we go ahead and mature our cloud journey, right now it's containers. Day after tomorrow, it's going to be serverless. Guess what? Your platform already solves for that, right? You know, it's amazing that Palo Alto Networks was and is still to a large part touted as a firewall company. I would go ahead and sit down and rebrand that. You're a cloud security company at this point. And you're a full stack cloud security, both from the application side to the network side of security. Uh, and, and you've scaled the platform in such a manner that it makes it easy for customers to consume, right? But what do you expect from them going forward? There's a lot of security vendors out there. There's a lot of cloud native approaches that are starting to take wing. What must they do to continue setting themselves apart so you continue to trust them and, you know, and appreciate their work? Honestly, I would say I would love to see you continue to do what you have been in terms of pushing the envelope from a technology perspective, in terms of you know working closely with your customers to understand their needs and to make sure that you understand you know what are the things that quote unquote keep us up at night. Now I, I see things already going on from uh, 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 I'm very fond of the recent acquisition for for instance of Apparetto from a micro segmentation perspective. You know, that is certainly one of the things that is on our radar and, and list of, th of things to do um, but to be able to, again, it's all about just maturing that, ma that security posture. And we're seeing that as just yet the, the next step in our evolution therein. Um, so I, from my perspective, it's, I'm, ex I'm looking for more of the same. I'm looking for whether it be, you know, Palo Alto developing within their own ranks or whether it be through, you know, future key acquisitions. I'm looking for that continued innovation and for that close knit uh, customer service and, and partnership. And I think, you know, staying true to those uh, basics will really, uh, will really help you see the course in, in, in my mind. Yeah, so, so I do wanna go ahead and add that, you know, one thing is the acquisitions, right? And, and you know, uh, I'm not gonna go ahead and name the company, but there's a particular company that I always go ahead and say, where acquisitions go to die, right? And companies go to die when they're acquired. Um, that's not happening here. And that's that's important to go ahead and note. You guys are not just acquiring and the good security companies out there that go ahead and survive are those that uh, do things like the McAfee of old that was acquiring great technologies and integrating them into their existing platform. And that's exactly what Palo Alto is doing to set themselves above the rest. You're not, not just acquiring and innovating through acquisitions, 
right? Trying to not reinvent the wheel, but you're integrating these acquisitions with the rest of the security stack. And that is where I think the, the, the future state of Palo Alto is very bright, is the fact that you're not just going ahead and saying, well, this is gonna be a one-off. You're going ahead and saying, hey, Prisma Cloud, it's four products right now. You have Twistlock, you have Redlock, you have PureSec, and now you have Apparato. And all of that is gonna go ahead and be integrated together on the same console. And then you take it a step further and you go from being a virtual machine to going ahead and offering a truly SaaS based product where the customer can go ahead and be a refiner and a consumer of the product itself and not have to go ahead and worry about the maintenance hassles of, oh, my twist lock went down or my red lock console went down. So I, I really do think that that is the, the, the one thing that I can go ahead and point out that has really impressed me uh, with Palo and has made me uh, and changed my mentality from what we spoke about earlier. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us in this Prisma Cloud Native Security Summit, the state of cloud native security. It's been a pleasure to talk with you.